Chat, let's let's watch something wholesome. Capybaras. Capybaras! Capybaras! Capybara time! In Germany, you never know. My internet is fine. My internet is fine. Capybara time! Use code Kitsunero Gamma Subs for 10% off! Okay, okay. Hold on, I made this mm -hmm. joke already. How you doing? Fantastic. I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a better week. I hope oh my god! Full of successful days. Oh my god! A lot of great ventures. I hope you just come up, brother. You smell great. You smell Holy! Great. Hey, look at him! Look at him riding the little turtle! Capybaras is so freaking adorable, oh, the man. Capybara. That's One so adorable. One of the most memeable animals to be added to Earth's roster. Almost entirely for their sheer positivity. And it's not like that fake positivity from animals like dolphins or performative mm. activists on TikTok. Capybaras are legitimately unproblematic, almost too much for their own Look good. Look at them. The thing is, they have They're no just reason so to be chill. like this. In fact, they have every excuse to be the exact 180. But first, let's talk about what this aquatic stress ball is. It's a rodent, and pretty much a plus size <laughs> yeah, guinea pig since the that's their biggest rodent. Throat. It's the fucking biggest rodent on planet Earth, man. Like, that is... I still can't believe that the capybara is a freaking go rodent. Even though they're like 60 times heavier. Also, guinea pigs are one of the few mammals that can get folded by deep water since they can't swim. Which is something oh. cappies know nothing about since half their personality they stays in the water swim. with them. Just like their cousins, the Nutria, which is basically just a beaver you've never heard of. And the Pacarana, who's Actually, probably most famous for getting abused with soap like a banned Old Spice ad. But out of what all rodents, capybara are the heaviest and the ones closest to the weight class of a grown man. And considering how people feel wow. about their cousins a hundred times smaller, you would think the capybara would be the most hated oxygen sink on the planet. No, but the they're only so thing adorable. More ironic than the fact that it's the complete opposite is the fact that this chunky chinchilla is so chill since history shows they should really be the polar Look opposite. Look at this baby. when something's this unbothered, it's because they've never felt any kind of- Bro, it's chilling next to a fucking croc. Or is that an alligator? I don't know the fucking difference. Bro, it's just like, yo, we chill. The pressure from predators. I'm not gonna lie, this picture goes so fucking hot, man. Chat, this- this- this goes so hard. This picture, like, this background. Hella metal. <laughs> Hella metal. Thanks for the follow, I don't know how to pronounce that name. It's why the quokkas on Rottnest Island have no fear of humans since they have no natural predators. Oh, Capybara, quokkas are adorable. on the other hand, have more ops than a rapper with a re- I've never seen Capybara swipe, bro. That's why I was so freaking stunned locked by the start of this video. I've never seen Capybara's fight. <laughs> Go charge. These giga gerbils have to avoid being discharged from the population by the biggest big cat in North America, a discount store brand crocodile, and a paraplegic Jurassic understudy. Their childhood isn't any easier, because juveniles can get caught up with ocelots, a paralysis oh, no. demon with wings, and technically oh, no. pelicans don't count, but it's not for- <laughs> Oh, bro, fuck pelicans. Pelicans are. Oh my god, I hate pelicans. Bro, they would. Pelicans trying to eat anything, bro. Oh my god, pelicans are. Oh, I hate them. Life trying. And normally, I an animal that them. has to share an area could with this many threats to its way of life compensates by becoming a problem itself. For example, if zebras had a stripe for everything with the ability to bury them, they wouldn't have a single pixel of pale on them. And we all know those TV static stallions ride that excuse like they get. Bro! Them, they wouldn't have a single pixel of pale on them. And we all know those TV static. Look at this! Look, look, look! Stallions ride that Bo excuse like they get. <laughs> tax breaks from it. It just makes more sense for a prey animal to be more willing to throw down. Predators get active to eat. Prey animals fight to live. But what doesn't make sense is a capybara doing the mannequin challenge seven years late when there's a homicidal vice grip out looking for calories. It's kind of like honey badgers okay. and capybaras are two ends of the nihilism spectrum. You got the four-legged assault Oreo who doesn't value anyone's life, not even its Holy own. Shit. And then there's a hippo hamster who can't be physically bothered. I don't care if this is Photoshop, but still in character. <laughs> Enough to care. And you would think this mentality would have gotten the cappy written out of the series of life by evolution. Or maybe they have the opposite of the kangaroo situation. Bro, as a kid, I used to be. I, I used to thought kangaroos are so adorable and shit like that. And now I look at kangaroos and they're just so scary. I mean, look at this bitch. She's so hella ripped. Like, kangaroos are so scary. What the hell? Like, growing up, like, you know, like, fucking Pooh Bear and, like, Kanger and Roo? Like, you know? That's a kangaroo? Yes, that's a kangaroo!
No, I'd win. No, you'd not win. No, you'd lose, bro. The uh, neutral force or natural force? Uh, how do I do this? Yeah. Uh, ripped kang, uh, kangaroo. Like, look at those fuckers! Look at them! Bro! What the fuck are those guys? She liked my pudding. Okay, thanks for the follow. The kangaroo looks like my dad when he got out of a parole yesterday. <laughs> no! Bro, kangaroos are scary. The kangaroo situation is that kangaroos used to have to deal with some of the most cartoonishly absurd like literally, I thought they were, like look at this little guy here. Like you thought, oh, he's so the cute, but no. The kangaroo situation is that kangaroos used to have to deal with some of the most cartoonishly no. absurd predators the world had ever seen. Stuff like a 23-foot Komodo dragon or the marsupial lion thylacleo. That prehistoric PTSD means that even look though kangaroos them. today have to deal with zero apex land predators, they still act like they're in the trenches. So it's possible capybaras had few natural predators coming up, and now they're Helen Keller to all forms of conflict. Believe it or not, capybaras weren't always the brolic beavers we know them as. Their ancestors were actually still living in Australia. <laughs> you have a point. These are cavies, but they are roughly the same size the capybara and sister would have been. Rodents okay. that evolved from Africa about 80 million years ago. Being small was lit because one, it's a whole lot no. easier to hide. And number That's two, true. eventually you get so small that putting you on a plane isn't worth the energy it would take to catch you. And when their ancestors pulled up to South America 40 million years later, they showed up to an area with few natural predators and plenty of food in the forms of the grasses they like to eat. Scientists now say that it was the lack of predatory pressure that allowed this plus size rabbit pig to grow to the size it is today. Fair. That and apparently capybaras have a special form of insulin that's actually better at getting cells to divide and grow. In non ap oh. biology terms, because I never took that class, this meant that cappies were able to exceed their weight limits without also increasing their chances of getting clapped by cancer. But of course, nature Damn. always catches up, and it wasn't like the capybara was tanky enough to disregard danger like manatees are. And in a messed up Uno reverse, <laughs> becoming a literal mighty oh, no. mouse meant the capybara was now much more attractive to predators than it would have been if it would have stayed the same size pre-bulk. So it's pretty much like cappies today have to pay for how good their ancestors had it. Like Gen Z. It's also possible that the capybara. Pain. Pain! Isn't as easygoing as memes wants you to think it is. They live in groups, and each group has a dominant alpha male <gasps> who gets the most food and female Wait. validation, which can lead to a. Wait! Capybaras have alpha? Capybaras have alpha. Each group has a dominant alpha male who gets the most food and female validation, which can lead to a lot of infighting in the Cappy clan. And no matter how hard the alpha male tries to flex, there's always going to be a few subordinates that get it in behind his back with his women. So even though the dominant <laughs> alpha male lays more pipe than any single subordinate, a majority of the plumbing actually comes from the subordinates as a whole. The females also get a say in the matter too, mostly because if a female ain't feeling a certain male, she dubs him by nose diving into the nearest body of water. Damn. Or she can hold her breath for up to five minutes. There's actually a lot of drama in the cabbie community if you pay attention long enough. It's definitely not like Bonobos, who seem to have all social structure figured out, albeit for R-rated, definitely not safe for work reasons. That still doesn't explain <laughs> why cabbie bars are so Oh my god. Chat, that sound just... Uh, fucking... Gave me a heart attack. I don't know why. That sound effect... Like, I thought, like, my doorbell was ringing, you know? <laughs> oh my god, I just got a heart attack by a sound that I thought my doorbell would be. Yeah, 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 okay. There, there. He, here. A display of how my social anxiety right there and then. Display of my social anxiety right there and then, chat. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ugh. I've gotten so scared that the doorbell would have rang without me knowing why. Bruh. Albeit for R-rated, definitely not safe for work reasons. That still doesn't explain why capybaras are so chill around animals not even in the same species. Oh like God. take Cheesecake, for example. Cheesecake was a capybara who was rescued and sent to live- 
His name is Cheesecake. That is so adorable. I I'm gonna cry. Criminal refuge for neglected and abused animals. But since she was only a baby at the time, she spent a lot of time living with the sanctuary's founder alongside her many dogs. Oh and in typical Lord. Cappy fashion, Cheesecake became one of the dogs, eating, sleeping, playing, hmm. and pretty much doing everything else in between with them. Eventually, she would be promoted to the de facto foster mom for any abandoned puppies coming oh. through the sanctuary. She would regularly adopt a family of abandoned puppies and raise oh them like her God. own blood. She would oh even discipline her pups if they ever got too out of line. Cheesecake was basically a Mother Teresa for terriers and any other orphan pups. Those weren't the only animals she adopted in her time, but there's actually a really good oh my reason God. why capybaras are the best rodents to leave your children with, and why they're the polar opposite of Chuck E. Cheese. Oh no. <laughs> Something about that cheddar feed never really sat right with me. Capybaras do this thing called alloparenting, where the adults take turns watching over the babies in a group in this kind of like revolving daycare system. They'll even go as far as nursing pups that aren't even theirs. Pray for bro on the left, he going through some stuff none of us can comprehend right now. The benefit is that in a jungle full of EDP sized threats to minors, this actually increases the cappy pup's sh Oh my god. N no. He just said that so calmly. Right the benefit is that in a jungle full of EDP sized threats to minors, this actually incre increases the cappy pup's chances that actually survive. Oh my god. Surviving long enough to celebrate their birthday. But it also means that Cheesecake wasn't just a stepmother. She was the mother that stepped up. Also, I just want to say that the same Yo! sanctuary would end up getting another capybara named Cobbler. And now Cheesecake and Cobbler are homies. And I feel like we should just take oh some god, time to bunnies. appreciate that. Another Aww. thing to appreciate is that plenty of other animals like monkeys or painted dogs do the whole ala parenting thing. But cabbies are the only rodents that do it. Well, actually, technically not really. Turns out red squirrels will adopt orphans as long as they're somewhat closely enough related to them. But that's not the same oh. as having a built-in nursery system in the group. So it seems that being naturally social, being as swole as they are, and having literal stepmother software in her system is what makes this He-Man hamster what it is. Capybara's got so much clout that even though they're truly native to South America, they have a pretty sizable fan base all over, but especially in Japan. Why Japan? Well, it all started in the Izu Shaboken Zoo in 1982. A worker was cleaning out an enclosure with hot water when he turned around and realized that all the capybara were huddled around a warm puddle that had formed. The worker okay. said bet, or whatever the equivalent in Japanese would be. <laughs> and ever since, the Izu Shaboten Zoo would create these traditional hot yuzu baths for the water-loving hippo hamsters to enjoy. Which is the entire backstory as to how this video exists. And because whatever ah, capybara okay. received, they give back tenfold. These videos going viral single-handedly brought in thousands, Oh my god. Oh my god. The music, sorry, the music just hit so hard. Oh my god, the Hollow Knight music hitting hard. Of thousands and even millions of yen in revenue, all from people wanting to see them. Meaning it is scientifically proven, 100% non-refutable, that capybaras are good for the economy. If your country's hey! currently in a recession, think to the last time you saw a capybara hot tub party. If you can't remember, then I think you found your problem. He's right. He's right. I think I should create a capybara <laughs> resort. We don't need stimulus checks. We need, need more happy capybara VTuber? What do you guys think? Is there already a capybara VTuber? Capybara VTuber. I know there's ferret VTubers. Orange capybara VTuber. Here's one, I guess. Mm. Ready to rake. No, it's not one. It's a free model. No, it's a model for sale. Capybara VTuber. Sticky business, a weird guy, capybara VTuber. Well, someone is already ad advertising themselves. Mikan, capybara VTuber. Mikan. Isn't really giving me capybara vibes, to be honest. Oh well. Be cabbies per capita. That's why there are entire websites dedicated to finding the closest cabbie bar in your area. So if I ever post a picture of me in a cabbie bar with no context, this, this is the context. Cabbie bars are such an unlimited serotonin hack that naturally people are gonna ask if they're good pets. And my answer is, yeah, they probably be good pets. Yeah, well, question is, probably. would you be a good owner? Here's why you probably Ooh, wouldn't. That's a One good is question. that they poop. 
a lot. They kind of have the panda problem where they, they eat shed. things that don't give them a whole lot back, so to compensate, they eat a whole lot more of it, which means they seem uh... to drop deuces at will. You might not get to notice just how much because capybara also take part in coprophagia, which in NICE 2023 YouTube guidelines terms means to eat food twice to get all the nutrients out of it. And if you can handle oh, watching okay. this infinite food glitch in action, there's the fact that you have to feed them in the first place. Remember, we're talking about a gerbil that can weigh oh as much as my you, God. but you're not just feeding one. Oh. Give, uh, give belly rocks. Since they're social animals that don't do well alone, you'd have to adopt a buddy for him or even another one after that. Cause two's company, but three's a party. And no self-respecting hey! Cappy would hop out at the after party with an entourage of one. All jokes aside, that same swim. logic is why Switzerland considers a guinea pig a victim of abuse if it has to live alone. It's really oh. not that different for a guinea pig. Guinea pig. I should have used that from the beginning. Guinea There's also the big. fact that since half their life involves water, you're going to have to have 24 hour access to anything that Capybara can at least wait in. And before you say bathtub, just remember that most of their backdoor business happens while they're in the water. Oh. Ugh. Oh. So, oh. You might want to rethink that. But the best oh. reason why you might want to hold off on adopting a walking I saw the coconut. Big blue. It's still a wild animal. Don't let the memes get it twisted. Despite all the hype, they're still very much capable of inflicting violence when they want to. Bro, those teeth look like they hurt. Or when they feel like they need to. And I'ma just say, it's real cute until you get it mad and you realize you now have a 150 pound rodent with an overbite coming. At you. In fact, in 2005, a capybara in a Japanese zoo murked a spider monkey that was standing in his pool by grabbing it by the neck. So if you're considering adopting a I biting, a pooping, snake. eating machine, you might be better off just having kids, because only one of them can give you tax credits. Or you can just move to Tigre, Argentina, because the South American city has been taken over. And when I say taken over, I mean that in the most passive way possible. With fires and an unusually cold winter killing their food supply, the Cappy clan seen the spawn en masse inside the Argentine Oh my god, look at the little capybara babies. They quite literally pulled up. The upside? <laughs> free lawn control. The downside is these deer rabbits marrying the problems of the two animals in one package. They destroy gardens and leave behind Hershey kisses, while also becoming a danger to everyone on the road. Oh, there are no. also been reports of capybara <laughs> running fades with pet dogs. Although oh, to be no. fair, the dogs probably yeah. started it. But there is another bright side if you want to look at it that way. The biggest threat to a capybara isn't a jaguar or a caiman. It's actually humans who have historically hunted them for their meat and for their hide to turn into leather. Wait, what? They're their biggest op by far. Wait, what? People are eating capybaras? What the fuck? Humans who have historically hunted them for their meat and for their hide to turn into leather. We're their biggest op by far. And if they decide to take back what's theirs, I'm not going to be mad bad at it and the fact that they're doing it to a gated rich community I, there's a moral in there somewhere but that's gonna do it for this video for more consistent uploads be sure to check out my tiktok and instagram i try to post daily on both and if you'd like to support this channel beyond subscribing also consider becoming a patron on patreon but like only do it if you can afford it because honestly you watching a video this far is actually more than i can really ask for got a whole lot of video ideas i want to get out for the new year so as always drink water hug your mother Dap up your father if he's not into the whole hugging thing. Try to be a cappy in a world full of cappers. And I'ma see y'all in the next one. Try to be a cappy in the world full of cappers, chat. I like that quote. I like that quote a lot. Whoa, they just... Look at them! Wow! Yo! I would love to just have r r fucking random ass capybara show up on the <laughs> on the pavement. Adorable. Going over the right way. Yep. Going over the right way, indeed. Oh my god! I got something in my eye, Chad. I got something in my eye. Hey, drink chocolate milk. Thanks for the follow. Welcome in. Welcome in. And YouTube, thank you for watching. Thank you so much.